Hi everyone, welcome to the second part of double machine learning. Now in the last part, we talked about FWL theorem. And we said that it's not really anything new. The idea here is that if you have a regression problem, you want to, for example, estimate the alpha. Alpha can be the treatment effect. All we have to do is the regress the outcome on other set of features, find the residuals. We call it outcome residual. Regress the uh, feature that we are interested in, let's say treatment on other set of um, variables like uh, confounders. Find the residual, we call it treatment residual. Then regress the outcome residual on the treatment residual. Why is this important? You're breaking down the problem. Instead of finding this, this alpha in over one equation, which we don't know what's the functional form or that, it's certainly not linear. We're gonna we can use different models to estimate the functional, estimate the model for the outcome and estimate the model for the treatment, which is really like a big, big um, improvement over what we can do. All right. Now let's see why this is correct actually. Nothing can explain this one better language of a causal graph. You see, my background is in machine learning and causal inference, and a causal inference is a causal graph. And I always think that people have a causal graph understanding of more advantage over the people that do not. In causal inference, we have two frameworks, a structural causal model of Judy Appel, which is my background, and the potential outcome, which usually economists are in that uh, domain. And regardless of whichever domain you are in, and both of them are completely valid, um, I think having an understanding of causal graph can be extremely vital, extremely, extremely important. All right, let's take a look at this one. Let's see as an example, we want to see the impact of, as an example, we want to see the impact of um, uh, a certain medication medication T on blood pressure O. All right, and the only confounder is age. And the only confounder is age. It's very, very simple. Look, I want to just look at the very simple proof. Confounder is the age, all right? And it's denoted by C, all right? Using the language of causal graph, let's take a look at this. Losing, losing the language of causal graph, that's how you denote this. All right? C is a confounder, which is a parent of both treatment and the outcome. All right? Very, very important. Now, let's write some equation here as a form of regression, how we represent this one. T as a function of C, because it's parent, the arrow to in it is is equivalent to alpha one, C plus epsilon, which is the error term, AT. And O has two parents, T and C is equal to uh, alpha two T plus alpha three C plus epsilon O. All right, so remember what we do during this FWL theorem, we regress O and uh, C, we regress O and C, then, so what, what do we do by regressing? We regress O and C, we are saying that I want to find the part of O, part of the outcome that is explained by the confounder C and then I find the residual, meaning that residual is the part that is completely independent of C. And then I regress T on C, I want to find the part of the treatment that is explained by C. Then once I subtract that, I will have a completely independent residual, I have a residual that is completely independent of C. This is very, very, it's very important to have this intuition that in a sense, the residual of O, when you regress a residual of T, it's completely independent of C. And that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to say that that confounder is unwanted. All right, and then you do this one. And then you find the residual, you regress T on C and so on and so forth. Okay, now, so what we want to do here is that I want to go ahead, I write this one a star, I will this one double a star. So I want to go ahead and re rewrite double a star in terms of uh, by replacing T based on the C. All right, so here's the thing. O is equal to alpha two. I get T from the star equation. Alpha one C plus epsilon T plus alpha three C plus, all right. So O is equal to alpha two, alpha one C plus alpha three C plus alpha two epsilon T 
plus epsilon o. Look at this, one more step. If you factor from C, All right, when you're gonna go ahead and regress O on C, what do you get as the error, as a residual? This is what you guys get as a residual. It's very important. I wanna use another color. This is the residual. We call it RO residual. This is RO, residual of outcome on C. What's the residual of, um, what's the residual of a treatment on C? This is ET, this is RT. All right, and if I do RO regress RT, what do I get? Alpha do ET, what's gonna be the regression? If I do it based on this ET, it's gonna be, it's gonna be alpha two. Isn't this what we want? We want alpha two. So that's a simple proof to consider, all right? All right. Now that's, it's not that we have this, we have a solid foundation. We can get, look at that based on a causal graph. We can look at that based on a proof that we have. Now we have a solid understanding. Let's go to the language of WML. We actually are there, WML. Couple of things. Because in WML machine learning, de-biased machine learning, you see this, this is de biased because we are actually de-biased the, um, denoising the outcome based on the uh, confounder and then de-biased the treatment based on the confounder. That's why orthogonal. In a sense, is independent orthogonal. After we explain away everything from uh, with based on a treatment and the outcome by the confounder. All right, and double because we have two equations. All right, one for the treatment and one for the uh, outcome. All right, so now let's go back to the concept of double machine learning and the treatment e effect. All right. In the double machine learning, remember the equation that I had from the initially when I write it based on the uh, this confounder. I want to go ahead and copy this equation and bring it all the way back for you here. Okay. So now let's take a look at this equation here. We have all those confounders, but what are we? What we are interested in is this alpha one, the desired. That's the treatment effect. What this FWL theorem says that, he says that, you know what, all other coefficients that you are not interested, everything else that you are not interested, let's rewrite this equation as follows. O is equal to alpha 1 T plus, let's say, uh, beta 1, I don't know, capital C, right? So we are interested in alpha one, we are not interested in any of those. That this is the uh, compact form of all those coefficients in the vector, okay? We consider um, the C as a nuisance parameter, nuisance, right? As a parameter that we are not really interested in, but we need to estimate that in order to get to um, treatment effect. So they are called the nuisance uh, parameter, all right? And this is the desired uh, uh, treatment effect, the alpha one. So based on this FWL theorem, what it says is that, you know what, if you want to estimate this alpha one, hey, do this one. I will write there, step. regress outcome on the nuisance parameters, whatever, that is not treatment, then find the residual. Two, regress treatment on nuisance parameters or variables, whatever you like, and find the residuals. Is it yours? RT. Then regress the residual RO on RT. Then do this. That's all it says. Now, so that's what FWL theorem says. What is WML says then? WML says that you know what? When you're regressing the outcome on the nuisance parameters, right? 
you can use any machine learning model you like for that. Who said that you should use linear regression? You don't need to use linear regression. You don't need to use linear estimator. Use any ML model. Use XGBoost. Use like GVM. Use neural network. Anything you like. Okay. So in the and then when you're regressing the treatment on the no sense parameters, use any machine learning model. Double machine learning. Two machine learning models. All right. So let's write it in a, a little bit better mathematical form. You see. When you regress outcome on this nuisance parameter C, this outcome O, in a sense, you're trying to find what? In one, you're trying to find a expected value of O given C. And in two, you're trying to find the expected value of T given C. That's what you're trying to do, right? When you, uh, when you project or when you regress the outcome on the no sense parameter, you're trying to find the expected value of O given C. Hey, use any machine learning model you like. Machine learning, I use it with M. Use any machine learning model you like. Any machine learning model, anything, capture any nonlinearity, any interaction you like. And then when you do this one, use any machine learning model you like as well. Isn't this exciting? Super, super exciting. So when you find the residual RO is equal to Y minus this, hey, it's no longer linear regression. It's not a no longer linear estimator. And then when you do this, you get, isn't this super cool? So WML says that replace a linear uh, estimator with the machine learning model of choice to capture the nonlinearity and any interaction you have. All right, let's write it down. So WML or DML, something called DML, it mentioned that, it says that uh, replace the estimator for both um, estimating the outcome and treatment using machine learning models, machine learning models. Isn't this exciting? All right, so what's the advantage? To capture nonlinear or interaction. between variables and parameters. Nonlinear effect. Who said that the relation should be alpha 1c? Why not alpha square c? Why not sine? Why not cosine? Use a man. Use a model as complex as extra boost. It's a three-based model that is very effective. This is very, very um, strong. Now, let's, now that this is your, this is your understanding of the man, this is just of it. Um, we need to see what's the advantage of this. The advantage of WML um, with the advantage of the or benefits or pros of WML is one is that um, um, so you can use you use ML to capture nonlinear relationship. A linear relationship. Two, it can support, this is quite important, it can support discrete and continuous variable. And continuous variables. Three, it's an efficient estimator. What does it mean? It, it can work on a smaller data. And four, easy to implement.
thanks to DML package. DML or econ library. Whichever you like. This has a support for R and Python. Perhaps I will explore this one for you guys uh, later on in the other uh, videos. All right. Well, so what's the disadvantage? What's the problem? What's the problem? Problem is like what you can see in machine learning, overfitting. Okay, so if you use the same data for train and test observation on the study that you have for the train and the prediction, then you are subject to overfitting, right? Which is very common for the people in machine learning. You're very familiar. So I assume you know that. It means that you capture the noise in the data. You try to feed a curve on every single data points. All right? So this may happen in a concept of WML a lot. And for that, the original authors, we know that the so train and test or cross validation is a way to, uh, to combat this. The original author, Viktor Chornazakov, he proposed the idea of cross fitting. If you read the paper, you see it talked about cross fitting is nothing but the uh, splitting the uh, data set to train and test or uh, to cross K for cross validation, right? To come up with the honest estimator in a sense. So that's a, a concept that cross fitting, you just need to remember that because it's easily overfit, all right? That's like if you, let's say, use decision tree, it's like easily overfit. So that's the uh, idea behind the um, WML with the proof and um, the whole explanation. This is all I want to talk about in this video. I don't want to make it uh, too long. I perhaps make more and more videos about this concept if you are interested. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any question, and I do my best to respond to your questions. There are a lot of stuff to talk about that. You might want to say that there are a lot of things that the literature has a problem. See, you need to understand the potential outcome and causal graph in order to understand causal inference very well. The choice of confounders, what to include there. But we didn't talk about that. This video was all about uh, WML. And I hope that this video was really useful. Looking forward to read your um, comment and question. Thank you so much and see you all in the next video.